Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas and today we're going to be talking about a tool called Copy Coder. And I discovered this tool about two weeks ago, I'd say. And with all these tools, these AI tools popping out left and right, you know, it's best to kind of understand where these tools are coming from, who are building out these tools, because I think with this new era, it's very important to see the team behind these tools. And behind Copy Coder, we have German entrepreneur Moritz Krem, who I've been watching his content for months, maybe years already. I've learned a lot about AI and coding with him. And he's the founder behind Copy Coder, which is this tool that I'm gonna be covering today. And as it says in the hero section, it allows you to copy, remix, and design UI in seconds with AI. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the dashboard and see what we can design. And before we dive into today's video, I'd love to invite you guys to my Discord community. We are a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers from all around the world that talk about different tools, different topics, different challenges that we're facing in our day-to-day -day life. We do daily live calls. So if you guys are interested in that, please join the link down in the description below. But anyways, it all starts with this prompt box over here where it says to describe your design. And not only do you have this text box where you can choose the type of element that you want to design, as you can see, we have web app, marketing website, mobile app, component. We can also choose to toggle on design max or leave it off. I always like to keep this on because the AI is gonna be a little bit more creative with your designs. Obviously it takes a little bit more time to generate, but I'm in it for the creativity. I'm very interested to see how the AI can be creative with my design. And we also have different functions over here. We have this grab from URL, which basically we can import some type of URL and combine it with our prompt. And we also have this image button over here, which, which lets you upload an image as a visual reference along with your prompt. So let's say we wanna create something like this. So we can go ahead and we can copy the link first, which is the GitHub login link. And we can take a screenshot of this as a second reference. Let's go like this. And inside of the website, I wanna to go to my dashboard and I wanna start a new project. So over here, I'm gonna start by grabbing the URL. So I'm just gonna click on this and paste in that URL. And it automatically starts grabbing a screenshot from that specific URL and places it over here. And it's also important here to kind of understand the structure of the design. We don't want to just say, you know, build out a sign in card for me. We want it to be actually like identical to this. So we have to say, all right, let's build out a sign in card with email address input and with a Google sign in and an Apple sign in. And then at the bottom, a, uh, a link to sign up. So I can just write that prompt over here and let's make sure that we select a component over here and we switch on this design max and then we can go ahead and click on generate. And we get the exact same structure as we get in the GitHub example. Obviously also even at the top over here with the logo placeholder, with the text over here, with these two inputs and even with the forgot password button over here on the right. And then down here, obviously these two buttons and then the sign up, it got the same structure. So now let's go ahead and try to edit a few things with the editing tool. So if I were to just click on the component, we have this edit option where we can do a global selection. We can set, edit a section or edit a text. In this case, let's just try to do the global selection to see how this looks like. And basically what that does is that it selects the act, the whole component, and then you can use AI to change specific things about this component. We can change the layout. We can change the global colors over here. So over here for the global edit, we can say, let's come, let's turn all of the blue colors let's turn the primary color into a more green color so let's just simply write it like this we can obviously also add the hex code which would provide more precise results so if i were to go on the github website and hover over a specific element uh, while inspecting the page we can see the specific hex code in this little pop-up so we can go ahead and add that and now we're done with that little prompt let's go ahead and apply the changes and boom, we get the results in just seconds. So that's looking really nice. And over here, we can use this preview button just to kind of confirm how this actual design looks like. So I can just click on this password input. It works, the outline works over here. We have different hover states over here for these different buttons. And what's also great about copy coder is that you can go through your different versions with these different arrows up here. And you can continue, you know, working on your design. You can go from something like this light mode to something more dark mode like this. And I would even say this pretty much looks like, like a GitHub sign-in card. So once we're ready with this, we can use this as a reference. So we can go ahead, click on this, use this as a reference, and we can start building out other things. So we can build out like a marketing website or like a mobile app with this design style. So for example, I'm gonna choose mobile app. So I'm gonna say, let's build a mobile app that allows developers to explore different repositories, upload their code, and even prompt out new apps. So we use this screen as a reference 
and we choose mobile app and let's again choose design max let's click on generate and then we can move this screen over here on the right side and as you can see we get an app with the same type of colors over here we have this main primary color and it also adds a nice secondary color that's very complementary to this green and if we were to click on preview and open this in a new tab we can just kind of see get a glimpse of how this app looks like as you can see we have these trending repos and we have your projects and down over here in the nav bar we can see we have home we have explore we have this add button to basically add new projects i would imagine our projects tab and our profile tab and we can continue using this design and use the edit tool to add new pages so for example we want to create the explore page Let's go ahead and ask the AI to do that for us. So we can say when the user clicks on explore in the nav bar, there should be an explore page with a grid of different profiles and projects from the from a community of devs. So let's go ahead and apply these changes. And beautiful, we get that explores tab over here. So we have the home and we have the explore and we can click on the preview to open it in a new tab. And we basically get like these different selectors over here and we get a small little grid of different developers and featured developers. Now I'd love to create a flow for this plus button. And this one is a little bit more complicated. So when the user clicks on the plus icon in the nav bar, there should be a pop-up that prompts users to either build out an app with a text prompt, right? Or to upload a repo. So let's go ahead and apply these changes. So now if I click on the preview, I click on this plus button over here, we have build with AI or upload a repository. Let's go ahead and click on build with AI. Boom, we have our nice little text box down here. It says describe your app idea. And it also has this, this button over here with a little icon that's moving that's pretty interesting. And if we go back and click on upload repository, we have the re repository URL and we have the repository type, which is pretty interesting. The AI kind of understands the whole context of our vague prompt, of our vague English prompt. Awesome, so now that we like this prototype, let's go ahead and try to export this, right? We want to export this to something like Cursor so that we can eventually connect it to Vercel you know, connected to a custom domain and so on and so forth. So over here in the three dots, we have the source code. We have export as HTML, export as PNG. I'm just going to click on source code. We have the ability to copy the source code. So over here, you can see the whole source code in, in HTML codes uh, format. And over here, we have the ability to export as an HTML. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And then once you have a file inside of your downloads, you can just simply right click and open in cursor and you get something like looking like this. And you can tell the AI agent inside of cursor to basically run this project on a local host like I did over here, run on local host. And it's going to give you this preview URL, local host. And as you can see, local host over here, we get the preview of our app working just fine. And we can see the different interactivity you build with AI. We can go back, we can touch this, we can select different things, you know, type in a specific URL if we wanted to, and so on and so forth. And then what you can do inside of Cursor, since Cursor has this AI agent integrated, or you can also, also obviously use something like Cloud Code, you can use the AI to build out different pages to add different API integrations. You can complete your entire project and then eventually connect it to a backend, maybe Superbase or something like that, and then connect it to your custom domain and start you know, sending your project to your potential users. I also thought this was pretty cool. I copied the code from Copy Coder and brought it into Lovable and just pasted in the HTML text like this. And we got something like this. So we got the plus sign, we can see build with AI, we have upload repository. So this is also like a cool way to kind of integrate it into Lovable and build out your project inside of Lovable as well. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it from my side. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And like always, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.